What would I do if I had $50 billion? Two words, private island. Two more, daiquiri maker. <laughs> I'd live like a king. Michael Bloomberg is rich, really rich, like eighth richest person in America rich, with a net worth estimated at more than $54 billion by Forbes. And for some reason, he wants to spend a big chunk of that change on a late entry run for the Democratic presidential nomination in 2020, which is interesting. And some would say crazy, but mostly people would say interesting. Bloomberg's bid will test and maybe answer two of the biggest questions kicking around the world of presidential politics over the last few decades. Number one, how much difference does money really make in a candidate's chances of winning? And number two, can you win the nomination if you skip the first four voting states of Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina? Let's dive into the money question first, like Scrooge McDuck leaping into his mountain of gold coins. What an image. As I noted above, there is no doubt that Bloomberg is super rich. That's a technical term. And looking back at his life in and out of elected office, there's also little question that he has zero problem spending his fortune on his political interests. In his three successful campaigns for New York mayor, that's 2001, 2005, and 2009, Bloomberg spent more than a quarter of a billion dollars of his own money. That's billion with a big B. In his 2009 campaign for a third term alone, Bloomberg spent $102 million of his own money. That amounts to $174 for every vote he got, according to calculations made by the New York Times, which is a lot. Bloomberg has also spent tens of millions of his own money on his other pet causes, that's gun control, climate change, and others, since he left office six years ago. And Bloomberg is already showing that he's willing to repeat that blueprint at the presidential level. So days after he officially got into the 2020 race, Bloomberg launched ads aimed at introducing himself to voters around the country. Here's one snippet from that ad. Mike Bloomberg intends to make good. Jobs creator, leader, problem solver. Mike Bloomberg for president. Bloomberg spent $57 million of his own money on that ad campaign alone, making him, within two weeks of entering the race, its second biggest spender on TV commercials behind only fellow billionaire Tom Steyer, who has spent more than $60 million on TV to date. Now, as interesting as how much money Bloomberg is spending on those ads is where he is spending that money. So in his initial ad buy, $15 million was spent across just five states, California, Florida, Texas, New York, and Pennsylvania. He has also more than $1 million booked for TV ads in Washington, North Carolina, Illinois, and Ohio, and nearly a million dollars in Michigan. Notice where Bloomberg isn't running any ads? Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and yes, South Carolina, the four states that lead off the nomination fight. Quote, if we run, we are confident we can win in states voting on Super Tuesday and beyond, where we will start on an even footing. That's Bloomberg spokesman Howard Wolfson to the Associated Press in November, before the former mayor made his candidacy official later that month. So Bloomberg's theory goes like this. He's already too far behind to compete in the four states that lead off the process, beginning on February 3rd in Iowa with the caucuses and ending on February 29th in South Carolina with the primary, which is honestly probably right. So rather than spend money in that quartet of states, Bloomberg is dropping his millions on states that vote beginning on March 3rd, which is also known as Super Tuesday because 14, yes, 14 states will be casting presidential ballots on that day alone. And among those 14 states are California and Texas, two population giants who allocate the most and third most Democratic delegates to the party's national nominating convention next summer. California and Texas are also both states that are so large geographically that a candidate for president couldn't possibly try to meet the bulk of the people who will be voting for him or her. In California and Texas, and after that in Pennsylvania, in Illinois, Ohio, and in Florida, the way a candidate meets people is largely via their television screens. And that's a direct contrast to how candidates campaign in the first four states where retail politics remains king. In Iowa, for example, it's about going into living rooms and diners to meet people and ask for their vote. TV ads are fine and good, but not the way most voters in those early states tend to decide who they want to be president. Now to weave those two threads, Bloomberg's millions and Bloomberg's radical approach to skip the first four states, together. 
So TV ads in places like California and Texas and Illinois and Pennsylvania and Florida and Ohio cost a lot of money, like in the millions for just a week of ads that even a decent chunk of potential voters might see. And not all of the candidates running for the Democratic nomination can possibly hope to have enough money to fund those sorts of ad campaigns. California Senator Kamala Harris, for one, dropped out of the presidential race in early December, setting a lack of available cash to run a viable national campaign. All of which brings us back to Bloomberg, who has A, lots of money, and B, the willingness to spend it on his campaign and on TV ads in those big and expensive and delegate rich states in particular. All of which gives him at least a puncher's chance in the race. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and a very special impeachment themed episode every weekend. Check them all out.